The problem, says author and psychiatrist Theodore Rubin, is not that there are problems. The problem is expecting otherwise and thinking that having problems is a problem. The problem is just a question or situation that presents doubt, perplexity or difficulty. It is an issue that needs to be corrected or overcome in order to achieve a desired state. Problem solving involves goal-oriented thinking and action in situations for which no ready-made solutions exist. Sometimes we interpret events, situations and behaviors in ways that lead to poor performance, behavior called mind traps. They can damage your ability to reach your full potential, however dedicated uh, time and practice to combating these thinking traps can promote more productive thoughts and behaviors. Now going back to our mind traps, let's see them in details. Popular saying states that first impressions last. When considering a problem, the same can be said of th first thoughts, the initial ideas you have when first considering a problem. The starting point of your thinking, whether an idea, a particular fact, an estimate or something else, usually influences your subsequent thinking about the problem. So you make a decision to invest a small sum in the stock market. For example, you discuss this with a friend who says, perhaps you could try one of those startup technology companies or no. Maybe just do your research carefully and see what the trends are. You go about collecting information about your options. However, the initial idea of choosing a startup technology company is hard to shake. It colors your thinking as you assess the possibilities and eventually it's the options you choose. But if your friend hadn't mentioned the idea in passing, it's likely your choice would have been different. The initial idea trap is most likely to affect the second and fourth steps of the problem solving model when you analyze a problem and when you choose what, hap what appears to be the best solution. Initial ideas about the nature of the problem and the best way to address it can color your thinking at these steps also and prevent you from engaging in honest, thorough analysis of problems and solutions. It is important to avoid this mind trap because the roots of a problem are often deep and if the problem and solutions are not analysed properly, you could end up with less effective solutions. Maybe it never happened to you, but can you think of any case where your initial ideas have prevented you from coming up with the most effective solution to a problem? If so, we will see. Defending your prior choices its yet another mind trap. Do you remember Albert who ruined his house by continuing renovations when he saw that it was going to be a disaster? We discussed about this in the previous lecture. Albert's mistake is a classic example of defending prior choices. When you're faced with a problem, it can be tempting to make a decision that protects your previous decisions. This is particularly true if your prior choices involved costs to you or your company. If you've already invested in a decision, it's hard to change it, even if doing so would be much less costly in the long run. This mind trap has a particularly strong impact on the fourth step of the problem-solving model, when you choose what seems the best alternative from possible solutions. Now, say you need to choose and then purchase a new delivery ve vehicle for your company. You immediately favor a particular track model to find out the pros and cons of the model. You then contact the manufacturer who produce it, effectively ensuring that what you've, you're told will confirm your original bi bi bias in favor of the model. It's just yet another example for the said mind trap. Even when people try to be neutral, mentally, they've often decided on an alternative before they even begin investigating. As a result, it's common to seek out supporting information that confirms an initial bias. The trap of selecting supporting information based on an initial bias is especially likely to affect the second, fourth and sixth steps of the problem-solving model. Analyze the problem will be affected. Your analysis of a problem will depend on the information you use. But your initial bias about which alternative solution is best can influence your decisions about uh, where to collect information and about which information is significant. This becomes a cycle because you are selective in choosing data it in turn appears to confirm your original bias. Choose the best solution, it's also a step very much affected by this uh, bias, because initial bias skewed the evidence on which you based your problem analysis 
Your interpretation of the solution will also be skewed. Also, you may be more likely to choose an alternative you originally favor than to consider seriously other alternatives. You will also have affected the last step of your process. You're likely to be more lenient in judging the success of a solution if it's one you originally favor. You'll eagerly seek evidence that it's working and may discount evidence that is not. Now, consider another scenario. A clothing store is struggling to compete with a new store in the area. The battle store owner assumes that this is because the competitor stocks more popular clothes. She tries to solve the problem by bringing some new clothes into her stock. Unfortunately, this solution fails and the store continues its downward spiral. But the real problem was not the popularity of the clothing, it was the price. The rival store offered lower price and its bargains attracted more and more customers. In this case, the store owner's ingrained assumptions simplified her view of the problem, causing her to overlook hard evidence and other potential solutions. Even if an assumption appears reasonable or based on common sense by nature, it's a belief that hasn't been verified. Especially when assumptions are strongly held, they can lead problem solvers to overlook or even ignore the facts. The first four steps in the problem solving model that we presented at the beginning of this course are particularly vulnerable to the mind trap of assumptions. Define the problem is affected. The store owner assumed that the problem lay in the merchandise she was selling. So she failed to identify the real problem, which was competition over price. Analyze the problem. Based on her assumption about the nature of the problem, the store owner analyzed the types of clothing sold in each store. She determined the average age of customers in the area and investigated trends indicating growing demand for high fashion items, including fashionable sportwear among less youthful sectors of the market. Identify potential solutions. It's also affected. Affected. The store owner generated potential solutions for the wrong problem. She considered options for altering her buying decisions, for example, to stock more fashionable clothing ranges and introduce new lines, such as sportswear, into her store. Lastly, choose the best solution it's significantly affected because the list of potential solutions was focused purely on type of clothing and not price, the store owner's choice of solution operated on a false assumption. As a result, the solution ultimately failed. Another one of the mind traps, it's conformity. By nature, human beings are social creatures. Whether people like, like it or not, the actions of others often influence them. This leads to another type of mind trap. That is the conformity we just introduced. Conformity or groupthink can lead problem solvers to accept the consensus of a group instead of being critical in assessing a problem and its plausible possible solutions. A sales manager, for example, needs to improve communications among his team members. He asks them for ideas and then all quickly agree that the convenience of an online, online forum would suit them well. Though he doubts that members will use it consistently, he sets up a forum. Sure enough, communication on the forum drops off over time. Instead of confronting with the wishes of the group, the manager should have evaluated the a forum solution carefully and explored other solutions as well. The conformity trap can impact every step of the problem solving model, but it's likely to affect the fourth and sixth step mo mostly. In a group, everyone else's support for a particular solution may convince you or even pressure to support it, and you will be a supporter too. And when it comes time to evaluate the success of the solution, the group may have a vested interest in reaching a positive conclusion. Again, it's time to practice. It's that moment of our video lecture. Stop the video, take three to five minutes and try to match right side example with the mind traps we just discussed. Welcome back. Let's see how can we make this match together. First, Susan keeps coming back example. The trap of initial ideas anchors problem solvers in their preliminary impressions and can prevent them from giving due consideration to other ideas. This would be the mind trap of initial ideas. Josie avoids asking her colleagues. 
The assumption that her colleagues won't be part of the solution will likely prevent Josie from considering useful solutions that require inputs from others. Yusef travels to, show, to a show during a dangerous storm, protecting prior choices even when it's better to discard them and move on with a revised plan may cause problem solvers to make unwise decisions. Next example, Michael's hesitations, when the majority or group opinions influence your perception of an issue, the mind trap of conformity is in effect. And the last one, Roots wants to buy a certain laptop by asking the friend to tell her only about the laptop's good features, Roots is selectively seeking information that supports her desire to buy one. So these are the matches between the examples we gave and the mind traps we just discussed. Whether consciously or unconsciously, everybody solves problems relating to their personal or work life every day. However, you can greatly improve your problem-solving effectiveness by gaining a better understanding of the problem, of the problem-solving process, essential skills and required competencies, as well as an awareness of the mind traps and pitfalls that impair this process. This course takes you through the essentials of problem-solving and explores some of its challenges. Next, you will learn how to deal with mind traps.